I'm with Jim here and he is an expert, I would say, in growing milkweeds. You know, I've had this video before about how I failed in growing milkweeds. My germination was horrible. I did everything I could. I grew them inside, I grew them outside, in the ground, in the sun, not in the sun, partial shade. I did everything I thought was possible, but this person here has a secret for us and he's willing to share it on our channel. So tell us some of your secrets on how you grow your milkweeds. Okay, so first of all, thanks for coming and visiting my garden. Uh, I guess the number one secret that I have in growing them from scratch is just to kind of follow what nature does. Mm -hmm. So the milkweeds come out of, you know, the seed pods and they got the little flurries where they just fly and they land on the ground. So some people like to bury them like an eighth of an inch or so they don't need to be buried. What I do is I have pots that already have milkweed and they're covered in rocks like this. And so these fill up the little gaps to fill up to where there's little gaps kind of like that. And so I just drop the seeds in those gaps and they just touch the soil. And from there, they start to sprout up after watering the plants normally. So there's not any extra stuff that you have to do to grow them from seeds. You just throw them in there with your normal plants and, and water them like normal. But the just being on top of the soil, I think is-, is uh, So ro rocks are your secrets? I guess you could say yeah, rocks or something to kind of keep them from blowing away probably okay. or I, keep them shaded. And uh, you grow them in the shade? I grow them in, in, the, in the sun. Actually, they prefer full sun, but I'm saying like the, the seeds are in the shade. They're like in the little grooves oh, between okay. the rocks. Oh, I see, I see. My plants typically get about 10 to 12 hours of sun a day usually. I try and put them in the sunniest part of my yard so they get the most. Okay, and what soil do you use? Um, just regular potting soil. I went out and bought some, uh, some of this soil, potting soil today. It's like Is there a particular bucks. brand? Or no, it's not a particular brand. Not a particular brand. I've soil. used Miracle Grow. I've used just regular bat soil, just anything I can really. And how often do you water them? Uh, well, that depends on the weather. Like recently, I haven't had to water them a whole lot because we've had a ton of rain, and that was actually really good because of the nitrogen from the rain was like really. It, I mean, they were like neon green. They were glowing. But oh. typically, when there's no rain, we have a, you know our hot droughts in the summer. We we'll water them once a day. Once Some, a day? Yeah, sometimes twice a day. Sometimes once in the morning, and then we'll come back out in the afternoon or the evening when the sun's gone because the sun being 12 hours, you know, just dries up the soil, so. Oh, okay. In the summertime. In the wintertime, I mean, once every couple of days because they're not there. They kind of go dormant, really, I think. And you don't plant them in the ground, I noticed. You plant them in pots. Is it, is it something that you prefer or? Well, there's, there's a few reasons for, for why I do that. Uh, the first reason, and that's really the most critical, is I haven't had a lot of success with them getting large in the ground. I'll mm -hmm. accidentally have seeds blow off in the wind because I can't harvest the seed pot in time. And I'll notice little spots in the yard where they'll kind of pop up, and but they'll never get more than like a foot or, or you know eight inches. So I one that's why I, I don't have the right soil for it here. The clay is horrible, and I'm working on that. I've talked to the uh, landscapers, and I've got some. Uh, it's a cotton compost, cotton burr compost. I'll show yeah. you in a little bit, and that's supposed to break down the clay and make it to where it's uh, it's better to. So for the uh, soil. you got some uh, milkweeds for us. Uh, if we want to transplant them in pots. Um, I can just use regular potting soil. There's nothing special I need to do. Yeah, there's nothing special, no. Okay. And, and so that, let me let me show you. I'll put, I'll put the dirt in here and I'll put a decent level of dirt and then I'll go ahead and put the water hose, uh, I'll water it just to kind of compact it and get all the air bubbles out of it. I'm sure everybody that gardens knows that air is yes, the root's worst bubbles, enemy. Yes. So then after I do that, I'll, I'll put another layer of soil depending on how much I like to usually keep it a little bit higher than this. This is actually not, a, not that great of a job. And then I'll dig the hole. I'll make sure the entire root ball goes in that hole. I'll cover it back up and then I'll water it again just to make sure that the roots aren't touching any any uh, air bubbles in there after I disturb the soil once again. And, and I so, think I see a pest there. Do you do any pest management? No, I don't believe in doing pest management. Cool. It's all natural. The only thing the only thing I will do, actually, yeah. So the only thing I will do is um, spider mites. Yeah. and aphids. I'll try to either squish them with my fingers or rinse them off with a water bottle, but honestly, the best luck I've had is uh, going and getting ladybugs from the store. Oh, they sell them in their ladybugs. refrigerator and just put them on there and they love to eat the aphids. Oh. What I do is I'll move these rocks out of the way and then I'll just scoop them up like this. Okay, you're not that, you don't have to be that careful. Like uh, No, they're resilient. They're weeds that uh, yeah, they're grow resilient. for they, they'll grow wherever. I've seen them growing on the side of the road in the hill country, the antelope horn. I'll put them when I transplant them from those planters to here and I'll go grab a couple so you can see what I'm doing after, I don't know. So this is stage three, I would say. So first I you guess, start with yeah. the seeds, then the seedlings go transplant. in there. 
and this and so, is where the transplants go. So then from there, I'll get them to this height or maybe a little bit less, uh, which is probably on average about, I don't know what, two months to get to this size. So then when I go in here, I'll just get my hands in here deep and try and scoop it around without disturbing too many of the other roots because they're all entwined. I was telling Omar about this earlier. They're pretty entwined right here. Damn it. You see all those? Oh, yeah. That's it. And then... Uh, Find the pot a, and then you put, a pot a, to put it in. Okay. Then I'll just, from here, I'll put it in a pot. Okay. So, okay. So uh, are there any other secrets? So the second reason why I like to keep them in pots is when it gets cold, you can take them in the garage and put them in, you know, put a heater in there or put some wrapping so that way they don't, uh, they don't die. Uh, do you do that only during the frost or uh, throughout the whole winter here? No, just, just when it gets super cold. Like when they, we have a freeze warning, oh, like okay. 35 degrees or lower, wow. we'll typically put them all in their, in the uh, garage. Wow, you might you must have uh, helped increase the population of monarch butterflies by 200% with this video. <laughs> uh, so, um, okay, so in summary, folks, we have we use rocks for uh, our germination, water if it's like especially here in the zone nine B, uh, twice a day if it's especially really hot, or once a day on typical days. Um, bring them inside during freezes. Um, keep them in pots. Uh, regular potting soil is okay. Is there anything else I'm missing? I think on the table. So do you have a special place where these chrysalis is? Yeah, uh, so when they're in places that are inconvenient, like tires to the car, we'll go ahead and tie it off with the floss and then we'll go hang it on a little planter that we have to have sticks. But now you you sticks. manually tie them up? Yes. With your hands? Yeah. Double knot or one knot? Double. My goodness, look at this folks, double knot 